Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Testing Certification. We are in chapter one talking about the basic concepts and moving into the next segment of it that is 1.4, the concepts of load generation. As a part of this tutorial, we will be understanding that what are the various ways by which load can be generated to be applied on a particular scenario. Of course, when we talk about performance, in other terms, it's all about applying load on a particular scenario and measuring the outcomes of that in terms of statistics and different graphs and reports. Now, of course, the primary focus comes to the way by which I can actually apply the load and load here basically depends or relates to the number of users who will be working on that scenario. And this load can be determined by different ways. And there are different ways by which I can actually apply load on a particular scenario or on particular application which is under test. Now in order to carry out the various types of performance testing, representative system load must be modeled, generated and submitted to the system under test. Loads are compatible to data inputs used for functional test cases but differ in certain principles. Let's have a look what are the different ways by which it can be different. For example, a performance test load must represent many user input, just not one. Now, here we are talking about, for example, I have a process of booking a flight and I want to test this with 100 different users. Then I don't want all 100 users to make use of one single set of data. I just want all 100 to probably use uh, 50 different set of data or probably 10 different set of data or maybe unique enough that is all 100 are flying from different origin to different destination. Now that's what the point one stands for. The second one says a performance test load may require dedicated hardware and tools for generation. That basically depends and determines that everyone may have different infrastructure and the resource which is required for the server to handle that as well. So in case people might be using different uh, client uh, machines and the, we just want to make sure that the browser is compatible or the internal RAM is enough or not. So we may have to set up that infrastructure in order to meet the expectations of a particular scenario. Generation of a performance test load is dependent on the absence of any functional defect in the system under test which may impact the test execution. That's where in previous tutorial we spoke about that generally the overall scenario executions are recommended to be conducted only after the system testing is being done. That means the entire application is perfect or stable to get started with, then we prefer to go with performance testing. Otherwise, your functional issues and defects can definitely interrupt your performance execution as well. So you need to make sure that it is one of the criteria to get your functional issues resolved before you get started with performance testing. The efficient and reliable generation of specified load is a key success factor when conducting performance tests and there are different ways by which you can actually generate it. So there are different uh, ways of generating the load which we'll be looking into this. To get started, the very first is load generation via the user interface, which is a direct interaction to the application. And this approach includes having literal users to interact with the product and see what exactly is the real behavior. But the only constraint in this particular approach is that as far as you have limited number of users, a smaller group of people working on your application, it's fine. The moment you grow with the number, of course, it may result into more expensive way of conducting the performance testing and sometimes not even reliable enough to get the statistics because uh, you just can't control a crowd of 1,000 members and that's working professionally on certain things and getting uh, hit on a particular button at the same fraction of second. But yeah, things can just happen uh, when there are Count currently working and a user or maybe all the users can hit a button simultaneously at the same point of time. But just from the point of instructions, these things can be definitely complicated. Also, the stability of the user interface represents a critical dependency here. If in case the user interface is not stable, things are frequently still being updated or changed, then this is not a comfortable option to apply the load on a particular scenario. So that's one of the thing. Of course, let's look at the other ones. The 
The next option here, what we have is load generation using crowds. Now, of course, we do talk about simulating users. We talk about uh, creating different scenarios, but we have different tools to do this job. But what happens to the scope of the realistic testing, right? So sometimes we prefer to have a real large number of users and we just ask them to hop into a particular application, start using them, give them a set of transactions which they can actually make use of and simultaneously work on that. So we make use of certain seminars, workshops, or any kind of tech heads, which you can just hop in and say that, all right, guys, we have got an app to be tested right now here. So we want all of you to quickly get to this particular link and follow this particular steps. And on the other hand, we will be just capturing the statistics during this span of time when a particular crowd is working on that. That gives Earth exactly a real behavior. But of course, you don't need infrastructure. You don't uh, need to set up a lab to do this work. But of course, you already had the people or people have some devices to test. So generally, this approach is being used uh, in terms of mobile application testing. But performance is applicable. Same to that as well. Okay, there's no difference. It's just that mobile application and desktop application, web application, whatever it is. So if you have got a crowd and the crowd has got access to certain things like mobile phone or desktop, you can also make use of crowd to generate the loads. The load generation via the application programming interface API. If in case you have been into performance testing for quite some time, you know what exactly I'm talking about. Sometimes when we do not have the UI stable, like in the previous case, I told you the dependency of UI is important if you're using uh, UI to apply the load. But what if the UI is not stable? Can we not do the performance test? Yes, we can do it, but we can do it at the middleware level. We can uh, approach APIs and we can apply the load on each one of them and see what exactly is the behavior, what is the response code. And we definitely talk about API testing but not exactly API testing. We are also talking about the performance point of view that what response time did it take? If the same thing is being executed by multiple users at the same time, that how does it react to that? So using APIs as well, you can apply the load on a particular scenario and see the behavior of it. Last but not the least, of course, load generation using captured communication protocols, which is completely a performance test tool driven approach. This approach involves capturing user interactions like recording a script by interacting with the application and performing those set of activities by replaying it. And uh, this is done with help of the system and the test. Uh, initially, you start with set of the protocols which you want uh, or this application works upon. And based on that protocols, we generate the steps and then we run that with number of people. And we simulate the users of core here and we simulate the number of users what we want. And based on the protocol based script, we will definitely be looking into that. We will be talking about uh, this tool based approach of simulating users using protocols in the upcoming chapters. But right now, for example, I can talk about JMeter, I can talk about LoadRunner. These are definitely capable enough to do this job that is record and playback, generate protocol driven uh, scripts, and then apply or simulate the loads and apply it on the system and the test. So, yeah, this is what we were just trying to target in this particular tutorial to understand that how exactly a load can be generated sometimes simulated and sometimes a real crowd can also be used to apply a realistic load on the scenario and see the behavior from the real point of view. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.